Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here, coming at you from the Knife Center, and it's our favorite time of the week because we're taking a look at the coolest new knives that have just hit our shelves. Let's check them out. Good news, everyone. Thomas is back behind the camera. Great. Anyway. Um, Welcome back. I hope you uh, hope you got all that out of your system. We can get back to work now. Uh, I might have to try again just to be sure. Eh. Heaven help us all. Anyway, let's get in. Welcome back, Thomas. Thank you for uh, for for deigning to return to behind the camera duties here. Uh, let's get started here with our first knife, uh, which has been highly anticipated. Uh, that's putting it lightly, I would say. The Magna Cut Salt. The er, Magna Cut Salt. The Magna Cut Paramilitary Two Salt is now here. Uh, the blacked out version, the uh, the satin bladed version, for those of you who prefer that uh, sort of thing, is still uh, not in just yet. Uh, and that version is going to come with some uh, a black and yellow handle scale. So keep that in mind. But that will be available too. You can also pre-order that at the link below if you wish. Um, but here is this version. So what do we got here? Well, we got the paramilitary too. Uh, yes, it has uh, salt in the name, which is Spyderco's, uh, you know, subline of near as possible to corrosion proof as possible given today's possibilities <laughs> lineup of knives. And they've applied that basically to the paramilitary two platform right here and given it that magna cut blade, which is a highly stainless steel in addition to being uh, very tough and holding an edge extremely well, thanks to its unique combination of properties there, which is pretty cool. Uh, and if this handle style isn't your thing, either on this or the uh, satin version, it's still compatible with your aftermarket handle scales too. So even though this uh, has been saltified on the inside, it should still swap over to the other stuff if you want uh, to purchase it for those purposes. If not, you do get some extra texture uh, and hence traction on these uh, new ridged handle scales here because of the uh, addition of more surface area thanks to those uh, those milled lines that create those ridges. Uh, 236 bucks and some change for this particular uh, combination of materials here, 3.45 inches on the blade. A little bit of that is given over, of course, to the finger troil there, which allows this larger, you know, medium to larger size knife handle like a, a nimbler knife. Uh, that's partly due to the weight and partly due to the ergonomics of being able to choke up like that. You got a nice full flat grind. It's still going to slice pretty well and a very acute tip as well. You see it gets real narrow right down there. Four position pocket clip so you can carry it whichever way you prefer. And of course the compression lock there at the spine. It is right hand facing but is finger safe. So you have the ability to flick open and flick close that knife without ever putting your fingers in the path of that blade. Very cool knife just in general. And of course, everyone has been clamoring and waiting for uh, that Magna Cut option to arrive. The day is yours, ladies and germs. Take advantage. Especially the germs. <laughs> yeah, more surface area, more places for germs to hide. What, am yeah, I just missing your joke? waterproof, so they'll clean very easily. There you go. Um, for another larger knife that still handles pretty nimbly, uh, this new release here, I got two versions here, let me hold this one, um, is quite impressive for the money, especially. It's impressive just because it's good. But when I tell you this isn't only a, a this is only a $55 knife, it becomes even more impressive. Three and three quarter inch blade. This, well, let me tell you what it is. Maybe I should do that. CJRB Prado. It's a Ray Laconico design. You got his name right back there. Three and three quarter inch length on the blade, RPM nine powder metallurgy steel at a $50 to $5 price point with G10 handles with a crossbar lock. I mean, come on, just the amount you're getting here for the money is great. It feels exactly the way you want it to feel. It's a little bit uh, stiffer than some crossbar locks. There's a little bit more resistance is what I mean uh, by that. Not an unusable amount, but just a little bit tighter, a little bit uh, tauter than some out there. But the action is great. We've got ball bearings in the pivot here. Let's try doing a, uh, Reverse flick, works all right. Of course, dealing with a crossbar style lock, you never have the uh, same kind of detent uh, that other lock styles have that allow you to do a really nice flick. So you have to get over that. It gives it a little bit of a different type of feel. Thumb roll, works great. 
G10 for the handles, nice neutral shape is gonna work for a wide variety of hands. You can get it in this teal or aqua green G10 as well as a black G10. And then there's two wood handle options as well. A uh, rosewood as well as this, uh, what is, oh, that's the G10 version. What's this uh, other handle material? Ebony wood right there. Very nice. So you do have uh, full length liners in these knives. They are inset and they are skeletonized to remove some of that weight. Uh, in fact, this wood version here is like 3.4 ounces, not too bad. Uh, the wood will flex just a little bit if you squeeze on it. The G10, not quite as much, uh, but it, it doesn't feel fragile. It doesn't feel flexy the way some other knives uh, have been accused of feeling in the past, but just something to be aware of in any case. Very nice. I mean, ton of blade there, three and three quarters of an inch with a powder metallurgy seal for 55 bucks. The wood, wood versions are also 55 bucks. They don't change the price on those. Yes, the clip is reversible as well. So these are great options for lefties. Come on people, this, this is definitely already uh, entering the short list, I think for uh, best budget folders of the year. I mean, just super impressive. Come on, come on, Thomas. I'm here. Aren't I? <laughs> really, really nice. Uh, this next knife is pretty sweet too. This is the Riot Alvin Lee designed PLXT pivot lock folders. This one right here, I think is hands down the coolest looking one uh, of the batch. Um, price on it is $117. Uh, they start, however, at about 112, uh, depending on which version you get. There are Micarta and G10 handle options available with black or satin blades. I think they're satin, I don't think any of them are stone washed. Uh, but this particular one comes with a PVD coating on a copper style PVD, which looks just really cool against this micarta. And it's a real rough weaved canvas. It's kind of somewhere in between like a typical canvas uh, texture and a burlap. Has that nice rugged feel to it. We got matching copper uh, accented color, col copper colored accents here on the front block out plate for the pocket clip and the pocket clip uh, itself on the reverse side. And I'm glad especially they went with a reversible pocket clip on this knife because you can kind of think of this as a button lock or a competitor to CRKT's deadbolt lock, which also operates via this button or a button on the pivot. Simply press that down. It would help if I unlocked the secondary lock, which I engaged at some point in the recent past and forgot about. <laughs> okay. um, so here you go. Let's try this again. There we go. So yeah, press down the button. You've got that finger safe closing. We just talked about what that was. Thumb studs open it really nicely. You can of course wrist flick it open as well. And then just in case you want that little bit extra bit of peace of mind, or if you want to screw me up on camera, maybe Thomas did it when I wasn't looking, you can slide this switch forward and that will block out that uh, button from being able to be fully depressed. It only works in the open position. I should mention that however. Now, as far as the uh, feel, of the action. I don't think it's ball bearings. I can't tell for sure because if they're, there's a bit of a shroud around uh, the the spot there, but it might be washers and kind of feels like it. I like that. Um, what about the rest of the specs? Shall we get into that three inch blade, nitro V steel, and the blade and the handles are a little bit thicker than most knives of this size. Gives you on the handle side a little more girth little more of a feeling like you can really hammer down on this knife and the blade thickness uh, that you have here is not overly thick, but a little bit thicker than usual as mentioned at this size. Gives you a little bit more kind of meat behind the bones uh, on that respect as well. And especially with a stainless steel like Nitro V that has a really good amount of toughness. That is another kind of thing, kind of bolstering my, that take on this particular knife. Yeah, kind of one of that small but mighty feeling blades that kind of can punch above its size class usually does. Next up, uh, we've actually got uh, some knives that dropped earlier today. Uh, some giant mice, giant mouse knives, uh, and some bench mains. We'll start with the uh, giant mouse. Uh, new versions of the Ace Iona V2. There are two of them. We have a, uh, a milled bronze aluminum handle right here and a milled titanium handle at the bottom. Each one's a little bit different in terms of their personality, not least of which uh, is because of the colors there. Uh, 175 for this aluminum version, 
With that, you're getting a sub three inch magna cut blade with almost a straight backed Puko-esque profile and that high flat grind and a stone washed finish as well. Nice rugged feel to that. And honestly, I love this particular brown color. I love the way the uh, kind of gold thumb stud and uh, barrel spacers are accenting that. Has a nice kind of broken in feel, a classy vibe, a little bit different than you know every other black handled knife on the market these days. I'm feeling that, that's really nice. We've got an inset liner lock, as you can see right there. Thumb studs only on this particular knife. There is, uh, ooh, we still got the uh, little plastic disc right there. What was I talking about? Thumb studs, there is the closed profile. As you can see, we've got a wire pocket clip, which always looks nice and classy from the outside, and that is reversible as well. Let's check out the thumb stud action. Feels a very good, very good indeed. Uh, the titanium version is naturally uh, a little bit more expensive, 235, uh, and that's not just uh, an upgrade on the handle material that you see here. You've also got S90V blade steel, so you should have edge retention better than the Magna Cut, although the toughness factor, the ability for it to uh, you know, bend and resist chipping under super heavy use is gonna be less uh, than the Magna Cut. What do you use your folder though, for though? Edge retention is gonna be pretty nice. Uh, otherwise, same shape, satin finish instead of the stone wash, maybe to class it up a little bit. Same gold hardware, but then of course the titanium finish going on right there. Either one of these is gonna be just a great classy feeling EDC. It's just, you know, pick which uh, aesthetic you like or pick which steel you like better and go to town. You can get a nice full grip on it. There's no kind of finger guard uh, or index finger um, guard. Yes. That was the word. Uh, to get in the way of choking up right behind the edge. As such, even though it's kind of a curved handle that naturally wants your pinky finger to sit in front of this beak right here, even my slightly larger than average hands, I've got just enough space right there. It's not roomy, but I have the space I would need to do a, you know, a big gorilla grip on a knife like this. Or I can choke back a little bit, pop my pinky on the side there and get more of a precision grip rather than a, uh, a power grip. At least that's the way it fits my hand, of course, your mileage may vary. Next up that dropped earlier today, uh, the next seasonal Benchmade release. This is a version of the Shootout. Another good looking combination of colors here too. Uh, 315 for this. Uh, you've got the crew wear blade that the uh, standard version is known for, which works really well, especially on a thinner blade stock like this. Yes, this is an OTF uh, automatic that can actually slice worth a darn. Most OTFs tend to have thicker blades because they're they seem to be more, uh, you know, prioritizing more strength for rough tactical uses. I'd say this is the everyday carry slicing fanatics OTF of choice, at least one of mine. It's one of the two OTFs I personally own. Not this one, it being a new seasonal release, but I think you know what I'm talking about. Three and a half inches, crew wear nice and tough, great cutting profile, How, almost a full flat grind on that thin blade. It's just very slicey. Uh, the grivery handles on this are a sage green and you've got these gold accents both on the firing switch and the bale on the back. Black uh, deep carry pocket clip and the black oxide finish as well. Just a really nice package. Plenty of traction thanks to the texture on the grivery as well as the even more heavily textured thumb pad areas. Keeps you, if you are you know thrusting with it or piercing with it, you've got a lot of traction from those pads right there. And as far as the action goes, you've got action as well as traction. Quite nice and something that some folks really like as well, perfectly centered blade in the handle. It's not offset to one side, such as for example, this knife, which we'll get to soon, as well as virtually every other OTF on the market too. Check them out. Seasonal release, like I mentioned, so only uh, gonna be available for a certain amount of time before it is gone. Um, earlier this week, we had another Benchmade drop, a new uh, expansion of the Meat Crafter line. This is a four inch version instead of the larger, was it seven inch, I think is the original, uh, 162 for this. Same CPM 154 steel that that uh, knife is known for, same kind of trailing point that that knife is known for as well, just scaled down. A little bit more tackle box friendly for smaller fish if you wanna use it for that sort of thing. Uh, easier to maneuver in larger game too if you don't need uh, that big, bigger seven inch length. This is certainly gonna be more manageable. And 
another option for your kitchen as well. I've always maintained the Meat Crafter is a great you know, kitchen butchering tool as well. The CPM 154, powder metal version of 154 CM. So the what the performance you get out of it is different from your, your basic 154 CM. The biggest thing difference being you're going to get a lot more toughness out of this particular steel than the non powder metal version, which again is great on a very thin blade because it can stand up a little bit uh, more to indiscriminate use. And it's just going to slice super nicely at this, this crazy thin blade as well. Let me just check that out. Very, very nice. Stone wash finish. We've got a green over molded handle. It is Santa Preen, nice and comfortable. My favorite detail is the, are the thumb scallops. My favorite details are the thumb scallops here at the front. Enables some uh, some more finesse type of grips when getting into certain areas. I always like that. Like scallops. Potentially. I wouldn't necessarily pop a scallop shell with this. It's kind of on the thinner side and it's a little bit flexy too. I mean, that's part of the meat crafter DNA. So. It, might not be the best for that sort of Certainly thing. Certainly work for plating. Yeah, and, and like I said, one could, but even with the extra toughness of CPM 154, if you like torque that right on the edge on a clamshell, I don't know, it might be fine. I wouldn't want to test that, however, on my own piece. Sheath is bolter on. Orange on one side, gray on the other. Uh, comes without any belt attachment. However, if you want to uh, actually belt carry this as opposed to throw it in a tackle box or a hunting pack, uh, a large tech lock or a small tech lock would work well. Thanks to the uh, rivets and the slot, all kinds of aftermarket stuff is going to work quite easily. All right, transitioning to slash continuing the kitchen theme here. Uh, some Baron Sun stuff here. Uh, some professional series uh, kitchen knives. There are two blade shapes each with two different handle styles available. You've got the professional chopping knife and the professional boning knife. Like I said, each you can get with either one of these handle treatments. They look pretty good, don't they? Uh, about 105 for this version of the professional chopping knife. Uh, it comes with a five inch Sandvik blade, 14C 28N steel to be precise. Great choice for a kitchen knife thanks to its toughness, especially when you're dealing something with a relatively thin edge that you want to be able to abuse a bit, maybe like work around uh, the joints of uh, chicken or that sort of thing where you might actually be contacting bone. Toughness is always a good thing. It's nice stone wash finish. The handles are two tone. You've got G10, two tones actually the wrong word here, but you've got G10 uh, handle scales here at the back secured by the lanyard tube and a single screw and micarta at the front with another single screw holding that in. Feels pretty good. It's a bit on the handle heavy side, I would say. So it's not a perfectly balanced knife in that regard, but we were talking about this in an FAQ a few weeks ago. For the folks out there that like that, uh, that thing you see on uh, social media channels, that Serbian style chef's knife that are like 34, 95 and you get the thing and then like they're invariably pretty poor, like really poor quality. This stylistically is not uh, the same aesthetic, but it has some of that same mojo going in terms of the shape and the vibe uh, or, or capabilities it could give you with an actual good performing and well-built construction too. That's an option. It comes with an injection molded sheath, clicks in quite nicely. Yes, there's belt attachment hardware right here, but this is a kitchen knife, so you don't necessarily need belt attachment hardware. Uh, there. You will have to supply your own. However, again, none comes in the box, but this is going to enable you to uh, store this in a drawer if you are of that inclination. There you go. Uh, the boning knife, I like even better. The balance is a little bit nicer. Uh, and the price is a little bit better too, even though it's a, a longer blade. Uh, six and a quarter inch, same 14C28 and steel. Uh, and this version with the white bone handles is $99, $98.95. Check that out. And that price is going to be the same uh, no, no matter which of the uh, two handles you get. Uh, for the boning knife, they're going to be 99 bucks. For the, uh, the chopping knife, uh, 105, um, either handle. But this one, you've got G10 with, actually, it looks like a single piece. I was going to say with thick G10 liners, but it looks to be a single piece of G10. So milled down and inlaid with white bone. Really, really classy look going on there. Really nice profile for kitchen butchery. Gets you closer to that original meat crafter in terms of shape, actually. Full flat grind on this, same stone washed finish that's gonna look good for a long time. Great amount of belly for those big slicey slices. And of course, sheath again, also included. 
check them out, man. Uh, next up from Baron Sun, we've got some slip joints coming in uh, from about 55 to 60 bucks, depending on which version you get. Uh, we've got the 457 GB. Uh, this is the red version of this knife. Uh, three and a half inch, or just over three and a half inches of D2 steel, 56.95 for this one at this point in time. Full flat grind on that D2, nice stone washed finish. Red G10 handles, pocket clip on a slip joint. Not seen too often, that's certainly gonna make it uh, more convenient for some out there. Also screw together construction, not something you see all the time, especially on more affordable slip joints. Pretty decent action, it's not uh, super snappy walk and talk, but it's certainly more than acceptable. And you got that nice half stop along the way to give you that little extra bit of peace of mind when you're closing the knife as well. Of course you could always close it without ever getting your fingers in the way too, if you know what you're doing. Yeah, really nice, just generic, longer drop point shape, certainly useful across a broad variety of usefuls, uses. Uh, and then you, we've also got the 484 GB. Uh, this is a swayback style handle with a sheep's foot style blade. Eh, eh, that's maybe leaning a little more, that's, that's more of a work with blade, we'll go with that. Uh, this one has a blue jean micarta coming in at just under 60 bucks. You can have, uh, of course, more basic uh, colors of G10 if you want, including black, um, but Blue Jean McCart is more interesting for the video, I think. Uh, instead of a full flat grind, we've got a mid-height hollow grind on this one, giving you thinner edge geometry. It's gonna thicken up there uh, towards the shoulder, of course. But one of the extra things that's gonna do on a knife like this with a Warncliffe blade, gonna make that tip even more acute, which is nice. Again, D2 steel. Again, let's check out the action. About the same, maybe a tiny bit snappier than the previous one. Fairly consistent, I would say, however and price not half bad at all. Uh, especially considering they're made in the USA. Not too bad, not too bad. Uh, how about a non-US made, uh, non-slip joint actually. A company who's more known for slip joints in general is Jack Wolf. Their latest release, which I, I somehow missed to uh, show you last week during the new Knives of the Week video, so I apologize to you folks out there. Uh, we've got the Gunslinger Jack in front flipping frame locking format. Uh, $350 for this one, which comes with a purple Kiranite handle inlay and a purple backspring here as well. I say backspring only because it's styled to look like a traditional slip joint backspring, but it's actually just a backspacer because as mentioned, this is a locking knife. You can see the frame lock right there peeking out into the bolster area. S90V blade steel here, again, excellent for your edge retention. Front flipping works incredibly easy, even for a uh, clumsy fella like myself. And full height hollow grind on these knives. I mean, just the, the thickness behind the edge stays so not thick for so long. Like it's just, it feels like a whisper of an edge and that's gonna make the uh, cutting experience right there so, so nice. Nice aggressive clip point shape, of course. You still have that long pull styling, even though this is a not a typically two hand opening knife, but you certainly could as though it were a traditional knife, open it that way. Pocket clip is right here. It is milled, embedded nicely into the bolster right there. Just a really nice, clean implementation. Uh, other versions of this knife that we still have in stock right now, we've got uh, the titanium version, uh, which comes with a, uh, a diamond checkered section here in the middle where that inlay would be and uh, blue hardware. We've also got a, uh, a Nebula fat carbon inlaid version with a uh, satin finished blade. Uh, the regular titanium version also has a satin finished blade as well. Prices on those uh, are just like this one at that $350 mark. And it is a Jack Wolf, so we of course have to talk about their packaging as well. Custom artwork for every one of their knife releases. Here's the name, Gunslinger Jack. There's their mascot with the six shooter right there. And inside you've got a leather pocket slip, you've got a uh, microfiber cloth and the POG, the uh, collectible disc uh, featuring, cardboard disc featuring the same artwork is all there in the inside. Similar vibes actually to this Jack Wolf, we've got some Terrain 365 Otters this week. When I say similar vibes, they are taking that kind of same approach with this knife that Jack Wolf takes with their whole lineup in that they're building a modern knife shaped like an old knife, in this case, a Barlow, of course. Uh, this is the Otter Flip ATB 
flipper coming in 379 and the blade steel is in fact not actually steel. You're dealing with teravantium here, their dendritic cobalt material. I could tell you what, what all of that means without actually understanding it. I would just be repeating things that I'd heard. The, the you know, bullet point of it, however, insane edge retention is what you're gonna get with a material like this. Got that great useful spear point Barlow shape, nearly a full flat grind on it, swedge near the tip. On uh, the handles here, we've got dark matter fat carbon inlays on the integrally bolstered titanium shell. Shell? We'll go with shell. Uh, and then similarly, we've also got a, a backspring styled backspacer that does make way for a hidden lanyard point there at the back as well, and a milled pocket clip. Let's check out the flipping action. If front flippers aren't your thing, this more rear conventional flipper might be more your style, and it works great. I like it. Check it out, 379 as mentioned. Um, I think that's the only one right now that's new. We've got other versions of the knife uh, still in stock starting uh, at about 235 for titanium versions and that same uh, dendritic cobalt blade. Um, oh, this one's also, we've got a couple other Micarta uh, options and a rich light option as well. Ooh, and an Ultim version uh, coming in about 319. Uh, we'll leave a link to the whole series, however, in the link in the descriptions below. Uh, next up, let's keep some high-end folders, high-end flippers going. New Nick Nichols design. This is the Dreadnought frame lock flipper with the cleaver blade. Three and a quarter inch Magna Cut cleaver blade as well. Uh, these are handmade by one gent in South Carolina. Nick Nichols, if you hadn't guessed. Um, 545 for standard titanium versions right now. Five, <coughs> excuse me, 565 for this frag pattern. And then we've got uh, some with a GL Hansen's uh, G Carta inlay for 575. And check it out. Nice titanium frame. There's your pocket clip. We've got the flipper tab. Let's flip it, shall we? Feels good. Fills the hand quite nicely. Definitely a lot of style in that cleaver blade. I haven't yet tried to use the uh, dual fullers there for a reverse flick. Let's do it right now. Nice. Yeah, yeah dig that. And of course you could use that for a more deliberate thumb opening as well. Gives you a nice track to follow along with. That's really cool. It's a custom titanium frame lock flipper. What else do you want to know? Tell me in the comments, please. Cause I think it's really nice. Um, if you want to spend more money on your uh, titanium frame lock flipper. Sure someone does. <laughs> how about, actually this is for a custom knife factory knife. This is actually a pretty good price especially given its size. This is the Terzola Eagle Rock coming in at $640. For that, you've got a four and three eighths inch long blade of S90V. At that kind of price, that's, that's pretty great. Uh, compound grinds, a two flat ground compound, compounded grind. What did you put in my, my, my water? I wasn't here, man. <laughs> Dual flat grinds on this blade. You've got a stouter flat grind at the back for pushing through heavier cuts and a thinner flat grind or higher flat grind at the front for more efficient slicing on the belly section of the blade. The handles, we've got a titanium bolster, titanium liners, the handle, red carbon fiber, really cool pivot, uh, or, uh, bleh, pivot collar there made from Timascus. You can see that on both sides. Swoopy Terzola style pocket clip. It mimics the uh, customs very nicely and it is screw mounted from the inside, which is pretty cool. Liner lock. We got two options here. Should I flipper it or should I thumb it? Survey says? You're gonna do either one. I'm gonna do both. Come on, what are we talking about? It's a big blade. The flipper almost feels dangerous and <laughs> don't, don't let that dissuade you, but like, Man, you can really feel the mass of the blade when you hit that flipper tab moving. Feel the mass of the blade moving when you hit that flipper tab. Let's try the thumb disc. It's a little bit more controllable, very interesting. Tons of reach, tons of edge retention with your S90V, tons of handle grip. I mean, my slightly larger than average hands, you've got probably enough, well, let's find out. You've got enough handle length here for one and a half slightly larger than average hands. See? It's a metric unit. Imperial. 
very nice knife. Very good, like honestly, very good price for, uh, for what this is too. Uh, this is the second time we've had them in stock, however, too, but it might be the last uh, because these aren't, uh, I think these are limited to, well, this one says 325 on it. How many did they actually make? It's a good question. I don't know the answer to it. Um, oh, that reminds me of something. I should mention these uh, Iona's we looked at earlier are numbered as well. This is uh, 176 of 400 and the titanium version is 138 of 300. So it looks like those are limited as well. All right, let's wrap it up with some OTFs real quick. Uh, back to Bear, Bear Ops technically this time. Uh, we've got two new uh, sizes of OTF to talk about. We've got the OTF 400 and the OTF 510. Each one of these is going to be available with a drop point or a Tonto profiled blade. Uh, 185 for the 510 and for that you've got a about a three and a half inch D2 blade. Very narrow as you can say. It's almost almost makes me uh, want to call this like an OTF toothpick style knife. I think like the old Texas toothpicks and that sort of thing. Really cool. Uh, aluminum handle, aluminum firing switch. Action feels pretty good. Actually, actually, action actually feels quite good. Uh, nice wide pocket clip there. You give yourself a nice platform for hanging on to the blade. It is not reversible. I should mention that just in case you're uh, wondering. And then the smaller knife, the uh, the 400, is 179. So about what was that like six bucks, six or five or six bucks less uh, than the previous one for that a sub three inch uh, D2 blade. And this, of course, is the Tonto version. Still plenty of length on this for a full Gorilla Grip, at least for me. And the action is still good. Edge is quite nice. The amount of play feels very minimal. Um, just about every OTF on the market is gonna have some blade play, but this feels very well controlled indeed. The action's pretty good. Action's very good, actually. No pretty good about it. It just is a nice feeling OTF. That's it. That's all we've got for today. Those are clip point blades, not drop point blades. That was bothering me inside my head. I realized I made a mistake there. More reverse Tantos. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> no reverse Tantos on the table today. Welcome back. It's fine. I got one in my pocket. <laughs> That's all we've got for today, folks. If you want to get your hands on any of these knives, check out the links at the description below to see what's still available. Uh, and if you just have something you want to share with us, leave it in the comments section below as well, please. While you're over at the Knife Center, don't forget about our long-running Knife Rewards program because the least thing we can do when you buy one of our knives today is give you some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. That's Thomas behind the camera. We are signing off. See you next time. Maybe. <laughs>